Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D rotating cube using the Arduino and the OLED display. And it will be super simple. So if you are a total beginner, you will still be able to follow along. Let me start by finally getting rid of this protective sheet. And let's quickly talk about the used Arduino board. So it's the Arduino Uno Mini Limited Edition and it's the Anniversary Edition. It's also numbered. You can see my number is 200, which is of course lucky number. And it's a very tiny little board. It looks great, almost like some kind of jewelry. But other than that, it's still the standard Arduino Uno. So you should be able to follow along the tutorial with normal Arduino Uno. You don't definitely need to use this board. Again, this is supposed to be a collectible item and the downside of the small form factor is obviously the size of the pin headers, so you cannot fit the standard sized jumper wires. It uses the USB-C port and let's just please ignore the fact that I've accidentally dropped it. The display is transparent OLED display in the resolution of 128 by 64 pixels, the size is 1.5 inch and it's using the SSD 1306 driver chip pre-configured with the i c connection. This time the display is glued to the PCB board but there is a hole in the PCB just so you can see the transparency. The display came with the connector cable but the connector cable was having the female pins on the other side so I had to just cut it so in order to connect it directly to the Arduino board like so. We will be using the Walkway website, which is free online Arduino emulator. And what's great about this website is there is already an example defined with the Arduino Uno and the 120 by 64 pixel display. This is not a transparent display, but it's using the same chip. Actually, I think that my display is using SSD 1309, not 06. And those two chips are so similar that you can use the same line to initialize those displays. Now, if you look closely inside the brackets, there are some options, but there is no setting for the Arduino pins. And I was a little bit confused by that in the beginning, but if you open Arduino, you know, pins and open this image, you will see that for the I2C connection, those are defined for A4, pins A4 and pin A5. So A4 is SDA, which is data, and A5 is SCL, which is clock. So if you want to use hardware I2C, you have to use A4, pins A4 and A5. Obviously, if you want to use software I2C, you can use any other pins, but that will be slower. Other than that, this sketch is very simple. It just has the integer progress, which it increases over time in the loop, and it draws a box based on the progress. We don't need any of those, so I will get rid of the progress. I will get rid of the increasing process and also everything inside drawing. Actually, I don't need any kind of font set, so I can delete this as well. I only need to set the color to white. So we are left with very basic sketch needed for to use the UHD library, which we'll be using to draw stuff. And what we want to do is we want to draw lines. So I'll open the manual and look for the draw line function. And this draw line function needs four different variables. So the X and Y for the first point and X and Y position for the second point. I will just copy this in my clipboard and paste it in my sketch. And we'll try to draw one line, which is exactly what we get, which is great because we will only be using lines to draw our 3D cube. Before we draw our real 3D cube, we will draw Unreal 3D Cube, or let's just call it Fake 3D Cube. And what I mean by that is instead of picking some 3D points and converting those into 2D positions, we will just try to come up with the 2D positions right away. So let's just pretend this is our cube rotated in the 3D space, and we need some points, and we need 8 different points going from 0 up to 7. So I've just randomly pick up the order going clockwise, so 0, 1, 2, 3 for the outer points, and 4, 5, 6, 7 for the inner points. And we already know that the display has the X and Y direction, and we also know that the size of the display is 128 by 64 pixels. So if you want to get the center point for the X position, it's the 128 divided by 2, which of course is 64 pixels for the middle for the X. And the Y in the UHD library goes from top to bottom and the height of the display is 64. So 64 divided by 2 equals 32 pixels for the center point. So we really need only two different distances because everything is centered and mirrored. So we only need this distance. So for the outer points and this distance for the inner points, let's just randomly pick up some values. For example, 28 for the outer point from the center of the display and 16 for the inner points and if we multiply 28 by 2 that's 56 which still leaves some space for the outside of the cube for our 64 height display let's define those numbers inside our arduino sketch and for this i will make my window a little bit smaller so i can see both the cube and our arduino code and i will click this small button if i hover over the scroll bar i can just make this bigger so i can only see the code not the preview because i don't need it at this time so we need to define an array of points we need eight different points but each point should hold hold the X and Y position. So there should be another array with X and Y position. So we need a multi-dimensional array. And this is nice tutorial. I will put the link down in the description. For now, we'll just copy this piece. So this is the integer array two by two. And this is already initializing the value. So I'll just copy this into our code like so. But I will rename this two points. We want the points. 
and we want eight different points, so zero to seven, and we want two different values for x and y. So I will just put it on a different line like so, and then each line will be a separate point. So the first point, actually point number zero, the x will be 64 minus 28. So let's just put it 64 minus 28, and the y will be 32 minus 28. So 32 minus 28, and I will just continue like this. So the second point, point number one, the x position will be 64 plus 28. So 64 plus 28, and the y position will be also 32 minus 28. So that will be the same 32 minus 28. And you will see in a minute that it's just changing the plus and minus sign. So point number two is x equal 64 plus 28, y is 32 plus 28, and the point number three is x is 64 minus 28, and y 32 plus 28. So we'll just copy this for the next four points but this time the number 28 will be replaced by number 16. So we'll just uh, quickly num replace this by number 16 like so. And we should have our points initialized, at least, you know, our 2D positions for now. So all that's left is drawing the lines in between those different points. And we don't need this last comma in here, so we just remove it. We already know how to draw lines. We just need to connect the correct points. So I'll just copy this line for drawing the line as a new line. And then I want to connect point number 0 with the point number 1. So I'll put in point number 0, 0 for the x position with the point zero but this time the second index should be one for the y position and we want to connect it with point one with the x position and point one for the end point one for the y position like so after this line is being drawn we want to connect point number one with the point number two so let's just copy this line and just change it from the point number one so here and here to point number two so two here and here and we'll just change the comment, connect points one and two, and continue like this. So now we want to connect point number two and three, so two and three, like so. And as the last step, we want to connect point number three back to number zero. So point number three back to point number zero. Let's just quickly test it if we get a rectangle. So I'll replay this simulation and see what we get. And we have a very complicated code to draw a square, but bear with me, it will only get better. So I'll again hide this and copy this section one more time, because now we want to connect different set of points. This time we'll be connecting points 4, 5, 6, 7, back to 4. So it will be 4, 5, 6, 7, as well as here for the y position, so 4, 5, 6, 7. And we want to connect those to points 5, 6, 7, 4. Again, for the y position, 5, 6, 7, 4. Again, let's try to run this to see if everything is correct, which it is. So let's just move to the last set of points. And this time we'll be connecting point number 0 with 4, 1 with 5, 2 with 6, and 3 with 7. So let's just copy this first piece, like so. And we'll be connecting point 0 with point 4. So it's 4, 1 with point 5, 2 with 6, 3 with 7. So again, for the y position, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this should get us our cube. So let's just see if we get it. And we have our cube, which looks like 3D, but definitely it's not. It's just a 2D cube being drawn that looks like a 3D cube. But we are making some progress. Let's just test our code on the real Arduino. So I'll just copy the sketch and paste it on the Arduino IDE. We want to go to the tools and select the right board. So in my case, it's Arduino Uno, even if I'm using the Arduino Uno Mini, and set the right correct port. Sometimes it will show you that the Arduino is connected. It's not showing to me right now, so I have to guess that it's probably this port. And then if you have never used the U8 G library before, you have to jump into the tools and select manage libraries. In here you want to type in U8G and press the enter key and somewhere down below there will be a new UHG library which is U8G lib. You want to click the install. I already have this library installed so I don't need to click it. Close it and then you click the upload button and hopefully there will be no errors. It will just tell you the size of the sketch that it's being uploaded to the board like this. You can see that we are only using 12% of the flash and 11% of the RAM memory which is great. What's not so great is the appearance on the Arduino display. You can see that the first eight or so lines are fine but then there's just a mess and by trial and error i have found out that it's this piece that's causing it so it's trying to set the fast i square c connection but unfortunately it's not working for me i don't know if it's a combination of a display or the board or both or maybe something completely different but if i remove it from the initialization procedure it works just fine so let's try it one more time and this looks much better exactly how it's supposed to look like let's finally talk about the free stuff. So we want to create the 3D coordinates of our cube and somehow project those on the 2D surface. So as you can see, there is a camera or eye here, which is looking at the 2D display. And we want to convert those 3D coordinates to the 2D X and Y positions. And this is called a 3D projection. Usually it's a perspective projection because we want the objects that are far away from us to be smaller compared to the objects that are closer to us to be a little bit bigger. And this often involves a matrix multiplications, which is not only pretty complicated, but it's also CPU heavy for something like Arduino. And long, long time ago, 
going away found this web page that was just stating that you can also do x for the 2d equals x divided by z and y for the 2d is y divided by z and i was like it cannot be that simple but it turns out it could be so let's just uh, try to do this we will temporarily switch to microsoft excel and do the calculations in here so we have our old known 3d cube except now we should have three different dimensions for the cube so the x going to the right side, the Y going to the bottom or top, depends what you want to choose, and the Z going inside the cube. So we want to specify those three different values for each of the points and then convert those into 2D points. For simplicity, let's say that the distance between the axis and the point is always one. So for point number zero, the X will be minus one, the Y will be whatever we want to choose, minus or plus one, but we want to stay consistent. So I will say minus one and the Z, let's just say it will be one. And I will continue with the second point, which is point number one, where the X is plus one, y is minus one and that is the same point number two which is this one this x is plus one y is plus one as well and that is the same and the point number three the x is minus one y is one and that is the same and for this next set of points we will use the same values because the x and y should be the same except for the z value which should be minus one because those are the one ones that are far away from us so we will use our equation so for the 2d exposition we will say 2d exposition equals 3d exposition divided by 3d z position and we will use it for all the x values and for the 2d y position we will say that the 2d y position equals 3d y divided by 3d z position so if i do it like this and then select everything i can select insert a new recommended chart and this one should be fine so it's a scatter type which takes x and y values and we will see that we don't see anything we don't see anything that looks like our cube and the reason for this is it's because we are standing let's let's pretend we are standing at the z position of zero and and we have the values going to one or minus one so basically we are looking at those values those are the four points that are visible but the other four points they are just behind of us so they are being reflected and being displayed on the same position so what we need to do is we need to move everything in the z-axis a little bit behind our viewing plate so it's like behind what we are looking at and it should be quite simple we just need an arrow value to move everything on the z-axis so i will create a new z offset value and i will just say that the z offset is zero for now and i will say that this equals one plus the z offset which I like F4, I don't want this to be changing, and use it for the first four, and for the fifth, I will use minus one plus the Z offset, and use it for all the other ones. So nothing is changing, but watch what happens if I just set the offset to be like minus three or so. Now everything moves, and we finally see all the points, and it's quite a resemblance what we have on our picture. So now we are finally using the 3D values to calculate the 2D positions, which is great. So let's just try this on the Arduino quickly, and what I will do is I'll just take those positions and multiply those by some value, and of course move it just so that the center, right now it's zero, zero, will be in the center of the screen. So let me just quickly do that. First of all, I need to multiply the values, the X and Y, 2D values by some multiplication factor. I'm using 17 here, so I will create a new values for multiplied values. And then I want to center those, so I will use the center X, which is 64, and center Y, 32, and just simply add this to the values. And I will most likely round those values just so we are ending up with integer values. I will copy the values one more time in the form of Arduino initialization for the array, so I can directly copy this piece of code into Arduino to test how it looks like. And I can see that some of my Y values are going actually outside of the screen. So this is negative value and this is bigger than 64. So I want to either make the multiplier a little bit smaller or just adjust the Z offset. So I'll most likely set it to minus four. And now you can see that it no longer goes outside of the screen. So I'll just copy this piece, paste it in my notepad, get rid of the tabulator. So I'll just copy this in the clipboard, control H, paste the tabulator in here, replace all, and just copy this piece into the Arduino code. Let's just paste it in here like so restart the simulation and see how it looks like and i don't know if you notice the change the cube is a little bit smaller but now it's based on the 3d coordinates our cube is still quite boring so let's just spice it up by rotating the cube in the 3d space and again rotation in the 3d space oftentimes requires the usage of matrices which are hard to understand and hard to calculate especially for arduino so we will cheat a little bit and not do 3d calculations for the rotation but only 2d and what i mean by that is we have our 3d cube but we can say that we'll only rotate it around one axis so in this time around the y axis which means that the y values will actually not be changing they will only be changing x and z values so for that we can use a simple 2d transformation a 2d rotation so if i open the wikipedia page and look for the rotation you can see there is a section for two dimensions and this one is using matrices which we can ignore because we will be using this one that is not using matrices it's a simple calculation with cosine and sine so the x rotated will be x times cosine of the angle minus y times sine of the angle and the y rotation point will be x times sine of the angle plus 
plus y times cosine of the angle. So it's a fairly straightforward formula which we can use. So I will jump back into Microsoft Excel and what I will do is I will add three new set of points. So I'll insert a few more cells, one, two, three, and that will be for the rotated point. So what we want to do is we want to get the initial values and then rotate those. Now, one thing to note is the rotation goes around the origin and we've already moved our Z in the some kind of direction. So what we want to do is we want to reset this Z offset to be zero, apply the rotation and then apply the offset. So let me just quickly uh, call this uh, rotated X rotated y and rotated z. Now since we are rotating around the y axis, the y values are not changing, so we can directly use those. So I'll say equals this value for the y and I'll just copy the formula from the Wikipedia. One thing to note, this is rotating x and y because those are the usual you know axis for 2D positions, but we are rotating around the y, so we are changing x and z. So when we apply these calculations, we have to replace x with x, but y with z. We also need some kind of angle, so I'll add a new variable called angle. And for now, let's just say to zero so that it's not being rotated. And so for the actual calculations, I will say that the rotated x equals x, which is this one, times the cosine of the angle. But the angle in Excel and pretty much all the other applications should be in radians, and we want to enter the angle in degrees. So the radians goes from zero to two pi for the full circle. The degrees goes from zero to three sixty. But we can also use a function called radians, which is also available for Arduino that will convert the degrees into radians. So I will select, I want to use cosine of the angle, this one. I will hit F4 on my keyboard. So this is always using this cell and close the brackets minus Y. But of course the Y should be replaced with Z. So minus Z times the sine of sine of the same angle again in radians. So this angle hit F4 on my keyboard, close the brackets and then use it for all the cells. And you can see that nothing has changed because for angle zero, it should stay on the same position. So let's just enter another formula for the Z position. So it is equals X, which is this one, X times sinus of the radiance of the angle, which is this one, hit F4, close the brackets plus Y, but in our case it's Z. So Z times cosine of radiance of the angle, which is this one, hit F4, close the brackets and use it for all the positions. We just need to adjust the X and Y calculations for 2D space because it's still using the old unrotated values. So I will say this is the new X and this is new Z and then use it for all the ones and for the Y, this is new Y and this is new Z. Again, use it for all the cells. Again, nothing has changed because there is no angle defined. If I change it to some value, for example, 30 degrees, something has happened, but it looks wrong because we are not applying any offset. So again, some of the points are behind the viewer, behind the camera, which is causing some calculation problems or unexpected results. So we again want to apply the Z offset, but for the rotated points. So the Z offset will be minus four as well as previously. And I'll apply this to the rotated Z value. So after applying all those calculations, I will say plus the Z offset Again, hit F4 on my keyboard, so it's always using the same cell, and then apply it for all the set positions. And voila, we have some nicely rotated points in the 3D space that are being translated to 2D positions and to the Arduino code. So I guess what we can do is we can quickly copy this Arduino initialization part into the online simulator, into the WOFKI, paste it in here and restart the simulation and see how it looks like. And finally, after all the effort, we have a cube that is rotated in the 3D space based on the 3D coordinates projected to the 2D space. So the only thing left is to actually translate all those calculations from Excel into Arduino code, which should be fairly simple. Let's quickly try this on Arduino, and as you can see, it looks great. The only difference that I've made is I've added a small bitmap logo on the right top corner, but otherwise it's a very same code. So we just need to take the calculations from the Excel spreadsheets and use those in the Arduino code. So we have a variable points, which is holding the final 2D positions of points. And we can keep this in here because we will be changing those, recalculating those values anyway, but we need a set of original points. So we will create a new array of array, which we will call orange points. And we need eight different points, but this time we need three different variables because we need X, Y, and Z position. And what I will do is I will just copy this piece into our Arduino code and speed it up and put this inside the brackets. like so we just need to make sure that there is no ending comma for the last entry so this is the set of the original points that we will be using to make all those calculations and then we need an array that will hold the rotated points but this time this needs to be float because those will be floating point values and we will call this rotated 3d points again with eight number of points with x y and z positions we need few more additional variables that we were using in the original excel spreadsheet so we need the angle and we'll call this angle degrees so just to make sure that we know that we are using degrees we also need the z 
offset, so I will create a new variable again float being the z offset set to the value of minus four. So that's the value that we are setting in the Excel. And lastly, we need the multiplier, but this time I will call this cube size just so it's obvious what's going on. So with everything in there, we can do the calculations inside our loop, but we have to do this outside of the drawing loop. So I will do it somewhere around here and I will say calculate the points. And that calculation will consist of two parts. So first we need to get the rotated points and then we need to translate or project those 3D points into a 2D space. And since we have eight different points, I will create a new loop. So I will say for integer y equals zero, while the y is uh, smaller than eight, we'll jump to the next value. So that will run for all eight different points. We want to start with rotating the 3D points. And of course we want to set the rotated 3D points to some value. So the rotated 3D points, the first index will be y because we are changing each individual point and second index will be zero. That stands for the x position. So the x position equals this. So x times cosine of the angle minus y times sine of the angle. So the x in our case is actually original points. So original points. Again, the first index will be y and the second index will be zero for the x position times the cosine of the angle. Again, we need to convert those to radians and then we will use the angle degree like so minus y. But in our case, before they said this should be z. So it will be original points z, which means we will set the first index to be y. So any point, but the second index will be two for the z times the sine of the angle. So times the sine radians of the angle degrees like so. The y position is the same as the original position. So for the rotated points for the y position, so the second index will be one. We will simply say that this equals original positions. Second index will be one for the y as well. This is not changing. And the last one, we can probably copy the first line to get the z position and just make a few tweaks. So the z should be second index. It will be the original position, second index zero. So it's x, x times sine of the angle. And instead of minus, it will be plus the z so it's the, this should be a z times cosine of the angle. But of course we need to add the z offset to this. So we'll add the z offset plus z offset. So we should have the rotated three points pretty much what we have in here in the Excel spreadsheet. So after we rotate the points, we need to project three points into 2D space. And this will be as simple as saying points first index will be y. So for every point in our loop and first second index will be zero for x equals rotated 3d points x divided by rotated 3 points z like so. And for the points y and the second index will be one for y position. It will be rotated position y divided by rotated position z. Now let's just say that the final positions are integers and we want those to be already transformed into the screen space. Right now this is only giving us more fractional values. So we need to multiply it by the Q cube size, so multiplied by cube size for both of those. And we also need to move it to the center of the screen. So I'll say half of the screen is 64 for X and 32 for Y direction. That should move it into the center of the screen. Finally, I will round it to the integer value. So I'll say round of this value and of course round of this value as well. And hopefully that's all that's needed. So I will just show me my simulation and restart the simulation. And nothing has changed, which is a great sign because we are using the very same values as we were using in the Excel spreadsheet. So we should get the very same looking result. Out. But if I change the rotation angle to, for example, 60 degrees, now the cube should rotate to a different position, which is indeed true. So the last step would be to increase the angle with every frame. Let's just say increase the angle. And I will say that if the angle is smaller than, let's say, 90 minus 5, because we only need to rotate by up to 90 degrees, just because the cube is the same once it's rotated past the 90 degrees, I will say the angle degrees equals angle degrees plus 5, otherwise the angle degrees is zero. So let's just see what this does. And as you can see, we have a nice looking rotating 3D cube playing in our simulator. And here it is the very same code running on the Arduino. Since we are calculating our 2D points based on our 3D points, we can get rid of the initialization for the points variable. So I can just safely delete this part like so on this one, just end it with the semicolon and get rid of this one. So our code will be a little bit shorter. And what we can do is we can dynamically change the cube size by changing the cube size variable. So for that, I will introduce a new variable called the time frame that will be just ever increasing value during our loop. So inside the loop, I will just say that the variable time frame equals plus plus, which means increase the 
the variable by one. And then what I can do is I can change the size somehow based on the time frame. And the easiest way how to oscillate is to use the sine function. And the sine function predictable goes from minus one to plus one. So let's just say that the cube size equals the sine function and we need to provide the parameter, which will be the time frame. So the sine again goes from minus one to plus one. So we want to probably go from the maximum size of 70 to some smaller size, maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30. So what I can do is I can multiply the sine by some arbitrary value and maybe that will be 20. So if I want to get a value of 70, I will say 50 plus sine of 20. That will give me a value of 50 plus plus 20 or 50 plus minus 20. So I will oscillate between the values of 30 to 70. So I will just update this. And I also want to put a semicolon in here. So let's see how this looks like. And it works, but it's a little bit too fast. So what we can do is we can increase the time frame by a smaller value. So instead of increasing it by one, I will maybe set equals time frame plus zero point whatever, or I can multiply the value inside sine function. So that's what I will do. I will multiply it by 0 0.2, which will decrease the rotation speed by the factor of five. And that should be hopefully enough. So we not only have the cube that is rotating in the 3D space, but it's also changing the size. And as usual, here is the very same code running on the Arduino. Let's talk about the changing the size of our cube. So right now we are changing the cube size, which is pretty much just multiplying the 2D points in the 2D space. So what we are doing is we are just scaling this in a 2D space. So the perspective is still the same for every frame. Now, if you want to get a different perspective distortion in the 3D tools, you often change the camera angle, but there is no such a thing for our simplified 3D to 2D approach. But what we can do instead is we can change the Z offset. So we can move the cube closer or far away from the camera, and it will also change the perspective distortion. So so let's just change the angle to zero. And right now the Z offset is set to minus four. If I set it to minus three and move it closer to the viewer, closer to the camera, you can see that now the points are far away. So there is a little bit bigger perspective distortion going on. I can move it to minus two and I will get even bigger perspective distortion. Of course, there is a limit to how much I can move the cube. So if I set it to minus one, you can see now those four points are just on the same spot. So probably the biggest what I can do is something like minus one point, whatever. And you know, this will be pretty, pretty huge perspective distortion. So I think I will go with something like minus two. And if I do so, you will also notice that now the 2D points are just quite big to fit on our display. So it goes to all the way to 102, while the maximum Y size should be 64. The best way is to set the angle to 45 degrees, because in this case, those two points will be closest to the edge of the display. And you can see it goes all the way to 151. So in this case, maybe I want to set the multiplication value to only like 18 or so, and those points should be fine. So let me just try the same thing inside the sketch. And it should be simple. We just manually override the value of Z offset to be minus two. So we just set the Z offset equals minus two and set the cube size to be only 18. So cube size equals only 18. Let's see how it looks like. And as expected, we have a much bigger perspective distortion simulating like a wide angle camera. So there are two ways how to change the size. You can either change the Z offset and cube size, or you can only change the cube size, which will only scale the points in the 2D space. And as you can see, the same code running on the Arduino looks great. It's not running very fast. And the limiting factor here is not the Arduino, but actually the I square C connection. I've shown you previously that inside the initialization of the display, there is an option to set the fast I square C connection. So watch what happens if I enable this inside the emulator. And you can see it's running much, much faster. Unfortunately, in my case, that's not an option for my board and the display. But what I can do is use a different display that uses the SPI connection, for like for example, this one. And although it looks very, very different, it's actually using the very same driving chip. So it's also the SSD 1306 chip, and it uses the same resolution, even though the pixels are huge. So it's also 128 by 64 pixel resolution. And just because I'm using the SPI connection with the Arduino Uno board, I can get much smoother animation. If I compare the creation with my original design, there is one thing that I haven't described, and that is the lines for the invisible faces are being drawn as dotted lines. If there is enough interest, I might record a second video because that one requires a slight tweak to the UADG library. If you like this video, please consider looking at my other videos as well. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.